done a kickback since then. Honestly, we just haven't done a kickback since then because it's just me running most of the things in between shooting the videos, doing the interviews, cutting up the clips, doing the edits, picking out the music, picking out the B-roll footage and working my other jobs. It's been very hard to put another event together. And if you do put an event together, it is very important to have other people that you're working with. So you're not the only one doing the heavy lifting because you can't do the heavy lift and put together a great event because most of the times when folks show up for things that you've put together, they're showing up for you. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Juice back with another episode of Housekeeping, and it's been a week. So let's review the content that dropped this week on the channel. I'm a therapist and I need a therapist. In this week's sit down, I got to do a long form chat with a friend of mine who shall remain nameless. And she's a black therapist. <clears throat> she does work out in Maryland. Um, she educated me a lot on what the system has been like for her as a therapist, her journey to becoming a therapist. Um, being on the fence and figuring out do I want to do social work or would I like to become a therapist and the contrasting of how important both of those things are so in the work of social work social work if you're a social worker right because I think it is very important to explain this social workers have the ability to become therapists and be therapists because your way to get there is the same in terms of going through school, graduating, and then going into grad school. But it's really the decision of, would I like to make a difference by sitting down, talking and unpacking what someone is going through when I graduate? Or would I like to look at the resources and the environment that they're living in and making sure they have what's needed? Groceries, the people that are around you doing house checks are you a danger to yourself or those around you what mental health resources or resources in general are you lacking or do you need and due to your situation can i make a difference the children are they being raised correctly well not raised correctly i think that's incorrectly but do you have everything that you need as a parent in order to raise children correctly. On the therapist side, because that's what my friend is, we also talk about the demographic that she caters to, mainly women. Outside of women, there's a male population that she does cater to in terms of young children and much older men. So there's a disparity between much older and much younger. And we talk about the importance of kids advocating for themselves, which you see a lot more now within this newer generation when it comes to mental health and how important that is for the landscape of what it is that we've been working on. Well, she's been working on separately before we came in to do this sit down. That conversation rings true to a lot of the work that I do because what was important was her talking about needing a therapist right as a therapist but also financially touching on the fact that she had to let go of getting therapy herself because there wasn't enough money coming in with a lot of the financial constraints that are going on in today's society how bad the market has been and folks really trying to figure out where am i going to get another buck a lot of people are in a very difficult position and situation where they have to figure out, am I really going to be able to get the treatment that I would like to get even as a caregiver when it comes to the therapy section of things, when it comes to as a parent, do we buy groceries or do I continue to pay the person that I've been paying to let me know oh, I didn't know I may be passing this on to my kids mentally or habits wise. What are bad habits, good habits? Do I have depression? Do I have anxiety? Do I have ADHD? How am I dealing with it or not dealing with it outside of just the cost of medication? And that really speaks to as a health system in the U.S. 
how bad things really are. I think I mentioned this in the last sit down that we did, but groceries right now, 21 items that used to cost $128 back in the day now can run you easily $450 in a grocery store because of inflation. And when it comes to a lot of the work that people are doing in terms of just living, living is becoming more expensive. And when I say living is becoming more expensive, I'm not just speaking on rent. I'm speaking on going to and from work. It's more expensive. Feeding yourself while you're at work, more expensive. Feeding yourself while you're home, more expensive. And the, that's before you even get to, do I have another mouth to feed or someone to take care of? Or am I single and do I not have a partner that I can split bills with? Before doing this sit down, I actually was on the phone with a friend who they've reached out to me before for help <clears throat> in terms of trying to find them the right therapist. And we got them the resources. <clears throat> we got them the resources to find the right therapist, but now they're running into paywalls of even with good insurance as someone who's a social worker, because he's a social worker, it's $125 for one session. If you have a major problem or whatever you're going through mental wise, when you're looking for help, usually the suggestion is if you'd like to do, if you'd like to work on yourself, you're looking at doing two sit downs a month. And when you do the math on that, that basically puts you a little under $240, $250. That's before taxes to get help. So in this, in this very expensive time of our lives, as the price of everything is going up, it's very hard as a platform to tell people, go get therapy or look into your therapy resource where it now becomes a versus getting out versus getting food paying rent versus getting help, taking care of your kids or having extra money to do things that are fun, that would bring joy to those around you, including yourself versus sitting down and unpacking what's going on. And remember the process of getting therapy, therapy is a dating game. So you, you pick and choose and you sit down for a couple of months at a time, trying to see is this person a right fit for me before you find the right therapist, which means that might take time. And telling someone to go and get therapy, knowing that they may have to pay $120 out of pocket just to break up with someone three to four months later and then have to repeat that process is not the most ideal advice to give somebody right now, depending on if what they have going on is an emergency. Is it something that they could put on the back burner? Are there little things that they can take care of, like journaling in the meantime until they find a better solution? Um, having a routine, whether it be before going to bed or after waking up, that would really set their day forward. And as a community and as an advocate, it's really put emphasis, which I, I had a feeling that this may be coming into fruition after the first year of the work that we did with Get Home Safe in 2019. Is it fair to tell people to get therapy and reach out to this resource if Getting help does look good, but if getting help happens at the sacrifice of what makes your life comfortable or what gives you the ability to, let's say, find moments of joy or moments of peace or moments of care, when do you start to be careful of the lies that you may be overstepping when it comes to telling people to get help? telling people to get into wellness when the affordability is a little bit unaffordable circling the block getting back into being a therapist that needs a therapist whether you're in the wellness industry whether you're in the mental health industry as a person whether you're in an industry of service or not we all deserve to have somebody that we can talk to about our problems that's not directly associated with our family and friends. That's the importance of getting a therapist, not just having someone who has the answers, but someone who's going to be willing and paid to be honest with not what I would like to hear, but what I need to hear, because 
maybe the issues I'm running into are a little bit bigger than I originally thought they were, fortunately. With how open she was in the conversation of her, jer her journey of creating a vision board, getting closer to her vision, finally becoming a therapist, and taking the avenue of instead of being in social work, being a therapist and what those different avenues look like, the conversation we had was important because most therapists I sit down with, I don't really know if they knew that they were going to be a therapist, but I don't hear a lot about the social work side, but when I do, it always sounds hard. But being a therapist and being a social worker, they're an ecosystem that one watches the other one hands. As a therapist, you're talking to the clients, you talk to them about what they need and what they have going on. And as a social worker, you're looking at their environment, you're saying, this is what they're missing. This is what they need. And this is how they get to those needs. And these two components work separately but they're the other half of the coin when it comes to the environment, just like Dr. B has with his private practice with him and his brother and what they're doing on that side. And I'm really looking forward to having that sit down with Dr. B's brother because we get to touch on the importance of why is it important to practice the craft that you're preaching? Especially they both own a private practice together as brothers. One is the therapist and one is more on the social work side but understanding the burden that may come with the work that they're doing and the work that they knew they'd be approaching and how rare it is to be a man in the mental health space. But again, I'm a therapist that needs a therapist and that conversation was phenomenal. Moving on to what else we did this week, drop wise, we did a sit down with a D2 athlete who I've done work with. And we were just talking about the importance of family, the importance of support. The dark time he had as an athlete, not knowing when his opportunity would come to be able to play ball, but still having the ability to believe in himself. And the importance of his family and what they've done for him. Sometimes every cent, every cent counts. Having a hundred dollars every week being sent to him or every other week. Like, hey, man, keep your head up and just, you know, focus on the sport, focus on the craft. And him not having dreams to play in the NFL, but just having dreams to make his family proud and to be successful. And talking about what does the new landscape of college sports look like as an athlete with NIL deals? What has college sports look like for these athletes that are coming out of the pandemic or going into the pandemic coming out of 2020 and how the shelf life of, of an athlete may have changed over the time and building up his identity, not only as an athlete, but as a person and as a family member and understanding that he could have applied himself better, but this is the best version of who he is going into his senior year as a D2 athlete. And the benefit and the joy of getting the largest amount in scholarship money as a D2 athlete who didn't start for the first two years and had to wait and figure things out. And now they're scoring tackles for loss. They're getting sacks and they're going to be the leaders, one of the leaders of their team going into their senior year and figuring out what does studying film look like and what is the benefit of studying film for a student athlete. That's the most recent episode of In My Shoes that's out now, dropped two days ago, if I'm not mistaken. I think the title is Football, f no, is it Family D2 Football and Adidas Q Stars? I think, I'm not sure, make the titles, keep it moving. Uh, and on this episode of on this episode of housekeeping, we're going to finish off with uh, as of late, I've had a couple of folks that have supported the business of Get Home Safe and what we've done for some time for some time. And as recently, I've realized I need to start being accountable to the questions that I'm asked, especially with the work that I've done. 
or we have done from 2019 to present. So what we're going to be doing is answering one of the questions for one of my dopest followers. She asked three questions. I'm only going to be able to answer one today, probably answer one on the following episodes and so on and so on. Would Get Home Safe be open to hosting another Kickback Vibe event? Would Get Home Safe be open to Would Get Home Safe be open to hosting another Kickback Vibe event? Are we open to it? Definitely, not even a question. Would we do it? I think there's a lot of pieces that would have to move around in order for get home safe to do a kickback event to make it make sense for the parties that we would do it as so in 2019 we did events and the events were themed we bring the therapist to the function in these events we had folks that would pull up for like tacos we'd have a dj playing music and we would have people that were lined up shopping for their therapists and this was in dc in 2019 the reason this is important is at that time this was before all these companies were in marketing when it comes to mental health and these spaces for folks to really unpack when it came to mental health the, uh, there's not a lot of representation in terms of black therapists in the u.s i forgot what the numbers were but I know it's not that large of a number when it comes to being in therapy and black. Now, being in D.C., we have a lot of representation because of the population, but in a lot of other places, that's not how it is. And what I came to realize from the events that we used to throw is, was this a great benefit for the community and what we're doing? I've never seen something like this before. Definitely. It was dope. We had... I think our first 70 something folks had gotten help in those events. And if they didn't get a therapist from our event, that made people more inclined to want to go through their insurance and figure out where can I get therapy in my neighborhood? The point was to prompt people to be okay with getting mental health and speaking about what's going on with them. But the goal was to get them to get their own therapist outside of the therapist that we're, that we were working with. And the reason for that is the people I work with who are therapists, they're my friends. So that's client confidentiality, right? It's number one. Number two, they can't tell me what's going on with a client. I should be asking about what's going on with a client, even though these people were my friends and associates that were shopping for therapists. Now, with the brand getting so much larger, I find that there's a lot of people who are willing to tell me about what they're going through personally and what's happening in their lives. But the resources are getting smaller and smaller because there's such a large demand on therapists. So what you run into now is a lot of the therapists who I've worked with back in the day in 2019, they're now booked and busy. So I don't want to have an event that people go and shop for therapists and the therapist that they want to work with is booked until like three months from now, right? So number one, in order to do another get home safe, kick back vibe event, I'd have to have therapists that are available. And I don't mean available like, oh, you know, let me look at my calendar. And then a month later, the person gets a therapist or three months later, the person gets a therapist. I'd have to say like two weeks later or less, someone's able to get a therapist, right? Number two, the venue, a lot of spaces in DC aren't what they used to be. And I still do have relationships with a lot of owners in the bar space when it came to the events that we did originally for get home safe out what we've done for so long, but ownership has changed. There's now a different expectation. Hey, if you do some stuff, you got to pay us for the spaces. And outside of just paying people for the spaces, it's what is my community looking from me currently? Because with all the content that has been made, that means that there is more of a focus on editing, lining up interviews, 
sitting down with folks, managing relationships, and on the production side, this is very time consuming. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people that I'm working on other in-person events with when it comes to Get Home Safe that are titled differently. Uh, shout out to my boy, Britt. We've been working on a wellness event. We did a lot of them last year. This year, not so much because a lot of folks' lives have been not in disarray, just responsibilities. Like, hey, life's going to happen. Life's going to life. But getting back to that for the month of September, October, November, I would like to see that. So that's definitely something that I'm going to be working on in the meantime. And then number three, following up and checking in with the folks that we've helped back in the day. You know, when we first started this work that we did, that was 2019, 2019 to 2024. What's that about five years, five, almost six years. A lot could happen between five and almost six years. And I've learned a lot in the work that we've done. And a lot of good came from the kickback events that we did. Nothing bad came out of the kickback work that we did, which was great when it came to get home safe and the events that we did, especially the we bring the therapist to the function. But I do think that there are different iterations of that that I'd like to bring to life as a limited series, something with camera work on the off end, once we're done, when it comes to people that we produce the events with and the aftermath of what we saw, how important that is. And I, I think there's something beautiful that can come out of that if it's covered correctly, but you also gotta know that as you and I know, we all know most of these things take money. So money to have merch for the event. So people feel like they're a part of what we've put together. Um, a good taste within the events when it comes to the music and the ambiance and what are we looking to accomplish and then outside of that you know putting a finish line on it because I think one of the first mistakes we made with the we bring the therapist to the function events where we didn't do that great of a job of having a finish line and what happened is a lot of the team that I worked with originally became burnt out because there was there was never a good as a team we didn't do a good job of stepping in and saying hey we're tired and we don't need to do too many events and it's okay to have a cap on how many people have we helped this year and now that we've helped them, let's get back to taking care of ourselves so we can do this again in the future. So the answer to your question is maybe. <laughs> um, anyway, with that being said, thanks for everybody for pulling up for this episode of housekeeping. I hope I answered that question to the best of my ability. And if not that, that at least brought to light the feelings behind the kickbacks that we did, the impact that it did, what we came to observe and what we learned from that experience and why we haven't done a kickback since then. Honestly, we just haven't done a kickback since then because it's just me running most of the things in between shooting the videos, doing the interviews, cutting up the clips, doing the edits, picking out the music, picking out the B-roll footage and working my other jobs, it's been very hard to put another event together. And if you do put an event together, it is very important to have other people that you're working with. So you're not the only one doing the heavy lifting because you can't do the heavy lift and put together a great event because most of the times when folks show up for things that you've put together, they're showing up for you. They can do this with or without you, but they're showing up for you because you're the support in their journey and they'd like to support what you have going on. So with that being said, like, subscribe, share. I appreciate everybody for pulling up today. Um, if you have any comments on any of the work that we do or anything you're curious about, please let us know. Um, and it's your boy Juice Jones from Get Home Safe back with another episode of uh, Housekeeping. Uh, thanks for coming through. Peace.